this is Carrie for Fullerton Professional Organizing and today we're talking about the YouTuber. Uh, her name is Mary Beth McGee and she has a YouTube channel at what cost and on uh, her channel she talks about simplifying life and growing a deeper faith with gospel truth, a bit of humor and loads of real life we can't go wrong. I hope you'll join me and look forward to taking this journey with you. If you're looking for a deeper community focused on simple living and deep faith, I'd like to invite you to join our Bible study group. Uh, so she has a Bible study group as well. But today we're talking about, uh, you know, how hard it is to spend time with God sometimes. Sometimes it's hard to just take a breath, take a some time to get quiet and to really spend time with God, praying, reading his word, and not only that, but listening. You know, we have to have some quiet time so we can hear what God has uh, to say. Now, right now, I am reading the Bible through in a year and I'm doing that through DAB, Daily Audible Bible. And um, I'm also listening to the recap from, I'll leave the links below, but uh, I listen to the Bible reading and then I also um, cobble. Cobble is the last name, but I will leave those links in the uh, description of what I am using. It's on my phone, or I would turn my phone around and show you what it is. But in past years, uh, I've also used this, and the reason is because this one has prayer and it actually has Bible reading and places to write what you learned from Scripture and um, and uh, places for prayer requests. And um, you can find what works for you. But right now, and, it, and even then, it's very hard. What I do first thing in the morning is... Unfortunately, I would like to say I immediately get up when my alarm goes off. I immediately put the Bible reading on and listen to it. But I'm like everybody else. I tend to get distracted. Um, I was doing that perfectly while I washed my face. I was listening to the Bible on audi Audible and that was working for me. But then I, I've here lately been getting distracted i look at my facebook posts first which don't really take me that long because i i don't spend a lot of time on it but it is distracting my phone is distracting uh a lot of tiktoks the christian based tiktoks pop up i enjoy those but i do allow them to distract me and, but I eventually do get to my Bible reading and then the Bible recap and uh, I get that done. Now, here are some things that I uh, took notes from her Bible, uh, from her YouTube. And she says, you know, time with Jesus. And it says prayer, scripture, whether it be prayer, scripture, Bible study, or a devotional. Um, and it also depends on whether or not you are already established in that Bible reading or if you are just starting to get uh, a, a habit of getting in some quiet time and Bible reading. It all depends on what season of life you're in, where you're at how long or how much, but she says, find capable time for her. Her husband gets up early in the morning, uh, because he has a long commute to work. So she is unable to go back to sleep when his alarm goes off. So she gets up 
really early, like 4, 4.30 in the morning. I can't do that, but then I work from home, so I have that advantage. I can get up, I try to get up at 9 a.m. and get my Bible reading done first thing. Um, but whether it's in the morning or at your lunch hour or before bed, when the kids have gone to bed, whatever time that is for you, um, you know, you you really are going to have to be intentional about it and something is going to have to be moved around, shifted to get that, that done. And, and it's not so you can check it off of your checklist as something that you accomplished. It's so that you can learn more about God and his son Jesus and the Holy Spirit so that you can understand how much he loves you and how he operates and how he guides you to protect yourself from uh, the enemy. So find your capable time. This is different for, for everyone. Your most capable time is before family wakes up in the morning. That's her capable time. That's not everyone's capable time. And she even talks about how she's gotten distracted too. You know, you go into the kitchen, you make your coffee, and then you start cleaning the kitchen and you're already distracted. You have to intentionally say, okay, I'm going to make my coffee. I'm going to not let anything else in my home that needs to be done distract me and I'm going to get it done. And she says, know what distracts you and what makes you enjoy Bible and prayer time. Is it your coffee? Is it those cute little um, bookmarks? Is it the little, uh, the little, is it highlighting in your Bible? And, you know, what is it that will make it more enjoyable for you. There have been times I've even pulled out the Bible dictionary and read scripture and thought, you know what, I know what this means, but maybe I don't know what this means. And I've looked up words that I thought I knew what they meant and really got a better understanding of what those words meant and it really did make the scripture reading come alive and make you understand it in a, in a little more deeper way. And she says, have a plan, daily reading plan or a Bible study. Now for me, I do Bible study. That's what keeps me on task for getting my Bible reading and Bible study done is I know that I need to teach it to stay accountable to myself and to God to actually learn and read uh, and study the Bible. I'm, I'm just like anyone else. I won't do it unless I feel accountable. And so that's why I do the things that I do um, to share my knowledge with others. Um, makes me accountable. Prayer is essential and listening, praying and listening to God speak to your heart is essential. Receive God's grace. Even if it is not going as planned, just keep going. You know, if you struggle with reading the Bible and doing Bible study, don't get down on yourself. Just start the next day. Don't just say, oh, I can't do this and give up. Just say, oh, I can't do this and then start it up again the next day. Um, so here's a little review of some of the things that she says uh, about finding time to spend with God. Um, she shows us how to create time of stillness to connect with our faith, especially in the times of life when everything is all but quiet, when all the noise of life 
crowds out God's word. It makes it hard. She says, a prayer journal can help you put together adoration, reading, and response from the scripture and any needs to be praying for during your quiet time. Taking notes helps you to pay more attention and keeps you from zoning out. That's why they have you take notes in school or why some of us take notes while we're listening to our pastors preach in church because it helps us stay focused and our and so that we can hear what's being said instead of zoning out uh what mary beth says is whatever your goals keep your key elements in mind having the right tools will go a long way in developing and sustaining this time of quiet and stillness that is really geared towards deepening your faith no matter how crazy and chaotic life may be all right and here are some uh things that she says although resources such as bibles devotionals highlighters and journals are available those these are not what keeps most people from meaningful quiet times actually getting there and staying focused is usually the hardest part that's why you know, these tools just help you stay focused when you're there. N many of us don't understand the effect time of day has on our quiet time. It may vary by individual. What matters is that you do it and that you do it in a time you are most capable of giving it your attention. It could be listening to Audible while you're working out on the treadmill. That's two things that people struggle with. Um, or while you're taking a walk around the neighborhood. Um, also, that works for praying for your neighborhood. All of these things, if you can think of ways to make your prayer time and your Bible reading more creative and work better for you and the community around you that is also um, a good way to stay focused and motivated like i said that's why i teach bible study because it keeps me uh accountable and it helps my community um and the same with taking walks and praying which is something that I do need to do more of. I do pray quite a bit, but the walking and praying um, is something I need to incorporate walking into my uh, schedule. Now, fitting in a quiet time may require having less to manage in your home. All your extra stuff may be getting in the way. Living simply can get rid of a lot of the things that are overwhelming your system. That's why she also talks a lot about simplifying your home. So you can do what matters. And this matters. This matters to your heart. This matters to your peace. This matters to your joy. Um, and this matters for your family. Remember that faith should be the most central part of your life and there will always be a competition for your attention. Your quiet time should be a priority. And again, it's not just to check something off of our list. It's to help with those things like love, joy, peace, and understanding. Uh, create a landing zone for yourself and your quiet time. Make it a place you can start and end your day with all of the things that you need for your quiet time. Clutter free. That way it will be ready for you without distractions. Have a plan. Know what you will be reading when you open your Bible so you aren't trying to figure it out in the moment or do some lucky draw on what you will read each day. Start and end with prayer. Begin by asking God to help keep you on task. Minimize distractions and guide you studying his word. Finish by praying through a response to scripture you've read. Whatever scripture you are studying, consider the elements of comprehension, interpretation, and application. Look at what does 
it say? What does it mean? And how should I be changed by what I've read? And um, I have heard from a lot of people that says, you know, in the process of giving yourself grace, let's say you try to, for the first time, to read the Bible all the way through in a year, but you only get a quarter of the way through. Go ahead the next year and do it again. Maybe you'll get half of the Bible read. The next year, you'll get three-fourths of it read. The next year, you'll get the whole Bible read. You have to start where you are, and you have to give yourself grace because God's not up there saying, oh, my goodness, just because other people can read the Bible through in a year and you can't, he's somehow going to punish you. Just keep building on your habits. It's the same with organizing, the same with your faith, the same with your business. You develop habits 21 days at a time, 30 days at a time, 60 days at a time, and 90 days at a time. Sometimes it takes people a shorter amount of time to develop habits, and sometimes it takes people certain people longer. But the, the point is, is to keep going. It's the same with prayer. You know, you have those people that say, oh, I think you should pray 30 minutes a day. I think you should pray an hour a day. I say, if you are just praying every single day on your commute to work, that's a consistent prayer life. You're doing that five days a week. And then you have church on Sunday. Person detected a black hand. Now, also, praying all through the day as your mind, as every time anxiety comes up, every time someone says something, about their life that they need prayer for. Every every little moment of the day can be a moment to spend a minute in prayer. You have 24 hours in a day. So if you spend eight hours, in eight hours, you spend eight minutes praying, that's eight minutes a day. So don't get caught up in how long you pray. The point is to spend some time with God. And yes, it is great to have some quiet time. Now, the only time I can really have quiet time because my head is very loud. It doesn't matter. It's just my husband and I. But my mind is constantly, constantly, constantly talking to me. So bedtime, when I put my head down on the pillow, turn off the lights and start trying to get some sleep. I have made a habit of starting to pray. I pray in English, thanking God for everything in my life. And then I start praying in the spirit. Now I know some of you believe in praying in the spirit in different ways. That is okay. Until God has revealed that to you, it's okay. That is not, you know, give yourself grace. That is not, uh, I'm not trying to pass judgment, but that is how I pray. I spend my time praying in gratitude and then I pray in the spirit until I fall asleep. Because throughout the day, when I see a Facebook post of someone that says, pray for me, I pray for them. I may not always comment that I'm praying for you, but I'm praying for you. Every negative thing that comes up in a day, I say a little prayer in my head. Um, and maybe if I'm alone, I'll say a little prayer out loud. Um, but I stay in a... Um, a state of prayer, uh, uh, always available to pray because little prayers can take seconds. So give yourself grace 
and try to incorporate some of these habits. And uh, thank you for listening. And I will see you in the next podcast and the next episode. Thank you.